Welcome back to the Audio Act Show. Sitting here with Gary Forbes, NBA free agent. Uh, how big of a joke is a WNBA? I mean, I mean, do you even like acknowledge it as? I mean, it really is so embarrassing, right? No, man. I'm not, I'm not gonna go there. <laughs> they, they got they got some good players, man. Did you ever bang a chick in the WNBA? <laughs> no, I wouldn't. <laughs> is that because they probably? Would? No, I just like I I couldn't be with a girl like if I'm at home icing my knees and she's right next to me icing her <laughs> knees. Yeah, like, yeah. Well, listen, if she's icing her knees, yeah. if, if it's for basketball, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> Too much, too much hoops on the knees is fun. And also, I, I, I look, you're a classy guy. I'll, you don't want to date a chick who looks like Rick Mahorn. <laughs> <laughs> what did you think about uh, Brittany Griner? The possibility, people were talking about. Brittany Griner, there's a sexy name. Yeah, well, <laughs> she's, Griner. She's, she's 6'8, you know, she's had more dumb. Yes! More dunks in the WNBA just this season than I think were ever dunked in the history of the WNBA. But before she was drafted, people were talking about, you know, like Mark Cuban was saying, hey, I'd give her a shot. No way. Oh, come on. That's just really? I'll get, listen, but I now, had this conversation on the Howard Stern Show two years in a row, and I proved myself correct. The, 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 the broads who play in, in minor league baseball pitch overhanded just for show. I, I was a morbidly obese, out of shape comedian 10 years ago. I laced the base head off a chick really? with an overhand. And, uh, you know, a chick who was uh, in the Penn State women's team, well, Final Four. She was the captain of her team. I, 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 she beat me 15 to 14 because I threw up from tequila. Well, I but, I swear, but, but I was up 12-4 <laughs> and 14-9 in the game. It's well, like, I just want to see what Gary thinks. Don't insult him. I want to see he what Gary thinks Brittany about it. He could beat Brittany Griner. I know he can. Yeah, well, I'm saying I want to see what you, how you feel about that. I mean, what, was that just a complete media fabrication? Or yes, is it possible? He's, he's trying to be classy about that it. That a uh, woman could could play in the NBA. I mean, uh, I don't, I, I don't see it. <laughs> Happening just because <laughs> just, just the physical play and the, the, the speed. I mean, you know, there are there are female you know basketball players in the NBA that are pretty good, but I think on the level of the NBA, it's they just get beaten <laughs> down. Yeah, yeah. So it's I hard, think so man. Too. It's hard, but how much trash talking goes on on the court? You hear these legendaries. They always say like the guys that seem the coolest and are the best skilled were the worst trash talkers, like Jordan, Larry Bird. You always heard they were crazy, like, in your face. Do like, you ever hear, does a lot of that still go on? Uh, here and there. I mean, yeah. obviously the NBA has gotten a little bit, uh, uh, you know, critical of trash talking and, you know, you More guys, politically correct. Yeah, you know, so, yeah. you know, guys don't want to, you know, lose their checks by, you know, getting technical fouls, you know, every night. But, you know, I, I definitely remember watching games and, and seeing, you know, reading lips. Uh, right, right. Saying, no, yeah. I know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, supposedly Jordan really would taunt guys, but I guess there were guys who were mostly his friend, like Ewing. Like when he would, like when he would shoot the ball, he would shoot a foul shot with his eyes closed. Yeah. You know, it's like as a Nick fan, I'm sitting there. First of all, I got money on the game. I got my mortgage on the game. And, uh, <laughs> this guy's mocking that, and he's got his eyes closed and shoots and makes a throw. Like, what are you doing? It's terrible. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, Bird too supposedly was really bad with it, and then Magic would just physically laugh at people. <laughs> uh, but uh, who was your favorite growing up? Was it Jordan? Obviously. See, yeah, yeah. Uh, Jordan, um, you know, Kobe Bryant. Um, right. Yeah, pretty much. Well, how old are you? 28. You're 28, so you're really young. I mean, it's, uh, you know, uh, you got, uh, God, 20 years ago, you're eight years old, and that's when uh, Jordan was, you know, really in his prime, man. That's true. But those Nick teams, did you follow, being uh, from New York, did you follow I was, the I, I never had a favorite team, man. I, I always had favorite players. Right, you know, right. I never had, never, you know, latched on to one team. Obviously, you know, Jordan with the Bulls, they obviously won every year, so. Right. You know, I ended up kind of being a Bulls fan, but just had favorite players on every team. Were you able to go to any games at the Garden as a kid? Nope. Uh, no? Yeah, that sucks. It sucks. It's cause, and, now, and again, you know, it's like uh, blue-collar people are getting cut out of, of professional sporting events. It's so expensive to go to a Yankee game and a, a, a Nick game. Forget about it. <laughs> Even though the, the, the band seats, it's such a, the parking, the ticket, the hot dog, the, a souvenir. God forbid you buy some broad, you're taking a Nick, a pink <laughs> Nick hat. I want a pink Nick hat. Yeah, well, guess what? I'm not a lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> I don't own, uh, like, you know, uh, you know, several real estate uh, complexes. Uh, it's really, it just kind of sucks because you want kids to go or, you know. Uh, but when's the first time you ever at a, a, an NBA game when you were in the league? Oh uh, no 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 no! <laughs> I, I think I went. I think I went when I was in high school one time. You went. Yeah. Uh, it was uh, 
Might have been a playoff game. I, I pretty much don't remember. Right. And by that time, you were way hooked on basketball, yeah, probably. Yeah. And like, what was that like to see a game? Was it at the Garden? Yep, it was at the Garden. I was in the nosebleeds way high, so... Uh, who were they playing, do you remember? Uh, Might have been the Pacers, I think. Oh, Pacers. Reggie Miller days? No, no, no. Oh, no, okay. No. So after that. After that. That's right. I'm never that young year. So what ha what's happening right now with you, career-wise? Because you've taken the, the hard road. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. you have not had it easy in your path you're to doing the what NBA. You, have to, you do what you have to do, right? I mean, yeah. What happens now? Like, like, what is your focus? Are, are teams talking to you about playing? Well, like, I mean, what do you uh, have to do? Free agency starts July 1st, and, uh, you know, my agent has uh, certain teams that, that we're targeting that, that could be a good fit for my, for, for my career. And uh, right now I'm just training and, and working out and, and preparing myself. Uh, you know, my season in China, uh, I got, actually was on the Houston Rockets before the James Harden trade, and, you know, after that, Houston, uh, you know, released me, and I was mm -hmm. on waivers and, you know, decided to go to China for four-month season and, and, you know, hone my game and, and work on different things that I wanted to work on and, you know, get paid at the same time and you know, yeah. play a lot of minutes. And, you know, it definitely paid off, and, you know, I feel confident in my game, and I'm definitely uh, going to enjoy uh, this process and, you know, getting back to the league. When do you hope you think? So July 1st, it starts. When is, like, uh, what would be a positive side? Like, you hope before August, July 2nd. August 1? <laughs> <laughs> Good for you, man. Yeah. You think that way. Yeah. But, I mean, hopefully that'll happen. How hard of a decision is it to make to actually say, look, I'm going to go to China. I'm going to make that decision. You know, you know I always, I never, uh, if I would have been, you know, money hungry my first two, three years yeah. in, you know, playing basketball, I would have, you know, you know, always just chase money and I always, you know, wanted to be happy, you know. Right. And, you know, being happy is, you know, something I want to do. And, you know, my dream was to play in the NBA. And, you know, I turned down so many jobs that the same year when I, you know, went to a, a training camp with Denver, I turned down jobs in Russia and right. Euro League jobs, big money. And, you know, I knew I, I was focused on, on getting to my, my, my dream and my goal. Uh, Ozzy, Os Ozzy Osbourne says on the road he wants a... Uh, uh, Bang sixteen Chinese women at once. What is your record? What? How many? <laughs> how many Chinese women at once would you? I mean, you know, uh, I mean, if Ozzy got sixteen, I'm thinking you're like close to twenty. Yeah, that's got to be. I don't, I don't there's no that. hiding from groupies. You know, like when you're six, seven, six, eight, and you are in a put foreign in, put country. Put him in an Asian woman groupie. Know. You can trip on them. Yeah, I mean. They're, <laughs> They they know they know you're there. They can recognize you walking down the street. I mean, Actually, how does my, that my work? first my first first ever road trip in the NBA was to Houston, and we were in Denver. You know, you got you know Carmelo and, <laughs> and you know guys who attract you know women. And you know, we got to the hotel, you know, late from a game. I think a, a, it was a back to back. Got in late, and they were like. No lie, probably like 10 to 15. They were like, line, lined females, up. Like, <laughs> wow. sitting in the lobby, and I was just You're like. You're kidding me. Well, that's unbelievable. Good for you, man. Mm. Good for you. Listen, I mean, this is what it's about. That's part of it. That's part of the, you work hard. You work hard. <laughs> You're working out. You're lifting weights. It's not all about scoring. It's about banging broad. Let's face it. So, so in China, though, I mean, is it the same setup that you, that you have the, the ladies waiting in the lobby of the hotel? Or does it is it like walking down the street? There's ladies coming up to you. Hey, you play. You're American. You play basketball, there's right? Two billion people in China. <laughs> <laughs> Enough so said. There's people everywhere. Yeah.